In this video, we're going to take a look at the limit of some trig functions. So we're talking about the limit as x is going to c of some trig functions, and we're going to see what that equals. Well, to start the video out, we're going to make one assumption, and we're going to prove this later. It is a pretty difficult proof. It's a long proof, but it's necessary to make this assumption now so we can show you the other ones, and then we'll go ahead and do that proof afterwards. And that is that the limit as x approaches c of sine of x is equal to sine of c. So, and this is for all c values in domain of sine, which is actually just any real number, because sine will take any value from negative infinity to infinity. So, we're going to go ahead and assume this, and based on that, we're going to see what is the limit as x goes to c of cosine of x. And we're going to see how can we figure this out. What is this? So, let's look at this first limit we know already. And what we know from our limits is that the limit as x goes to c of pi over 2 plus x is equal to pi over 2 plus c. Well, how do we know that? We can just use our sum rule. The first limit will be that of a constant, so we just get pi over 2 back. And then we're looking at the limit as x goes to c of x, which we know is just going to be c. So we get the limit as x goes to c of pi over 2 plus x is just pi over 2 plus c. And what we also know, based on our assumption, is the limit as u goes to c, or not to c, as u goes to pi over 2 plus c of sine of u is equal to sine of pi over 2 plus c. Right? Seems pretty reasonable. We said that as x goes to c of sine of x is just equal to sine of c for all c values in the domain of sine. So that also makes sense. Based on our rule for limits of composite functions, hopefully you're able to see that the limit as x goes to c of sine of pi over 2 plus x is equal to sine of pi over 2 plus c. Well, what is sine of pi over 2 plus x? We're going to use one of our trig identities to try and find that out. So that's just going to be sine of pi over 2 times cosine of x plus, and this is going to be cosine, or sorry, sine of x times cosine of pi over 2. So sine of pi over 2 is just 1, cosine of x is cosine of x, sine of x is sine of x, but cosine of pi over 2 is 0. So we get that sine of pi over 2 plus x is equal to cosine of x, and that is a trig identity you might have already been familiar with. Hopefully you're familiar with this summing identity when we have sine of pi over 2 plus x, but that lets us know that the limit as x goes to c of cosine of x is equal to, as you might have guessed, cosine of c. And that's going to be also very helpful in proving the rest of our trig limits. So again, this is for all values in, of c in the domain of sine, so similarly all values of c in the domain of cosine. So what about something like tangent? Let's take a look at tangent now that we know these things. So we're going to say the limit as x goes to c of tangent of x. Well, that's just equal to the limit as x goes to c of sine of x over cosine of x, which we know, based on our quotient rule, now is just going to be sine of c over cosine of c. And of course, this is given that cosine of c does not equal zero. So we can actually say that the limit as x goes to c of tangent of x is just equal to tangent of c. As you see right here, this is tangent of c for any c in the domain of tangent. So when cosine of c equals zero, for example, at pi of 2, we know that tangent is not defined. So pi over 2 is not in the domain of tangent. So that's why we know that the limit as x goes to pi over 2 of tangent of x is not going to be tangent of c, because this statement, as we just said, only works if cosine of c does not equal 0, or for any c that is in the domain of tangent. So we need c values in the domain of tangent, not c values outside that domain. So we can go ahead and extend this, as you might have guessed, to cotangent. And this is just going to be, if you visualize cotangent as 
this is going to be sine, oh sorry, this is going to be cosine of x over sine of x. And that limit is just going to be cosine of c over sine of c, again, provided that sine of c does not equal zero, or that for any c in the domain of cotangent. And that lets us know that the limit as x goes to c of cotangent of x is equal to cotangent of c. And now let's go look at our last two. I'm going to erase the ones over here. Last two. First is going to be cosecant. So we're going to look at the limit as x goes to c of cosecant of x, which is this, the limit as x goes to c of 1 over sine of x or not sine of c, 1 over sine of x. And if you remember in our properties of limits video, we showed that the limit as x goes to c, if the limit as x goes to c of f of x is equal to l, then the limit as x goes to c of 1 over f of x is going to be 1 over l, provided that l doesn't equal 0. So we can use that knowledge here and just say the limit as x goes to c of 1 over sine of x is 1 over sine of c, because we have this given right here. And this is, of course, provided that sine of c does not equal 0, or that c is just in the domain. So in, in the domain of cosecant. And then similarly, if the limit as x approaches c of secant of x is going to equal the limit as x approaches c of 1 over cosine of x is going to equal 1 over cosine of c. And that is just, of course, cosecant of c. And why don't we write this as, uh, oh, and this is secant, not cosecant. So we have secant of c, and this is cosecant of c. And this is, of course, provided that cosine of c does not equal 0, or that c is in the domain of secant. And those are all of our trig functions, and you might have seen a pattern, so we can kind of rewrite all of these as a broad statement. So provided that C is in the domain of the trig function in question, we have shown that the limit as x goes to c of sine of x is equal to sine of c, that the limit as x goes to c of cosine of x is equal to cosine of c, the limit as x goes to c of tangent of x is equal to tangent of c, the limit as x goes to c of cotangent of x is equal to cotangent of c, the limit as x goes to c of secant, or let's do cosecant over here, cosecant of x is equal to cosecant of c, and the limit as x goes to c of secant of x is equal to secant of c. And again, that's provided that c is in the domain of the trig function that's in, que in question, but these are all your limits. These are all the properties of limits for your six basic trig functions.